Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about a short story. This short story is by Guy de Montpassant, he's a French author and the short story that, that I'm talking about is called The Orla. So I picked this a short story from um, a collection. It is called The Collected Stories of Guy de Montpassant. It's like this. And uh, this short story is entries in a diary. So we have a, a narrator that is telling us the story as entries in his diary. So he is a man that we never know the name. And it goes from 8th of May till 10th of September. We begin the story in May uh, and he's telling us that a ship passes through his um, property and this was a Brazilian ship and for some reason he got the feeling that he should wave for the ship and so he does that and in the next days that follow it he uh, becomes feverish he becomes to form fever yeah and this state of fever uh, only is more prominent in the night, in the evenings. And he tries to do everything to get out of this state, so he sees a lot of doctors, but for some reason that is unknown, this fever doesn't pass. In one of the, in one of, uh, the nights that he is like that, he begins to feel like someone is in the room, although he doesn't see anyone. And he, he begins to have nightmares, recurrent nightmares. And one night he resolves to take with him a bottle of water to his room. So through the night um, he for him to drink water and he brings a bottle of water with him and puts it in, in, in his nightstand and when he wakes up uh, during the night uh, with thirst and he wants to drink the water he realizes that the bottle of the water is empty and he tries to remember if it was he who drank the water. And he has almost sure that it wasn't him. But if it wasn't him, who it was? And so he, try, he, he begins to think that perhaps he's sleepwalking, he's sunambul and perhaps he drank the water and he doesn't remember but in the next night he brings the, the bottle of water with him to an, his nightstand and the same thing happens when he wakes up the water is is not in the bottle and so he tries to do an experiment so he he mounts a tray with a bottle of water a bottle of milk biscuits i think strawberries and when he wakes up he sees that the strawberries and the milk and the biscuits are still there but uh, the water and the milk are all drunk he begins after that he begins to be interested in occultism so in the dark uh, matters and he reads some things about it and he resolves to do a voyage right now i don't remember the name of the 
of the land or the local for, for to where he is going but he, he does a voyage and he begins to feel better the fever passed and his health returned and he feels way better and so he returns home there the fever returns his disposition worsens the nightmares return and the sense of someone is in the room with him um, returns as well so after that he does a second voyage now to paris and he goes there to meet a cousin a lady cousin and he goes to dine with her and a, a doctor a doctor that is very interested in um, researching for uh, nervous diseases or nervous conditions and um, the doctor does an experiment he hypnotizes the cousin of our narrator and he says to her that she the next morning will go to where the cousin is and he she will he will ask him to um, the cousin loan her uh, 5000 francs i suppose i think that's the that's the amount of money that he says and she's going to say that that money is for her husband and so they go away right and in the next morning we have the cousin coming through our narrator narrator uh, hotel room and asking him for that amount of money and he asks if the husband her husband is really uh, necessitating that amount of money if he got uh, bankrupt or something and she doesn't know how to answer and then he says that if she remembers the night before the doctor said that she would do that that very day and she doesn't know what he's talking about our narrator doesn't insist he just says that he doesn't have the money to give her but he's going to try to gather that amount of money so the cousin goes away and the, our narrator goes out and goes to find the doctor and says exactly what happened that morning and the doctor asks him if he now believes him and so they together go to the cousin the lady cousin and the doctor sits her and puts her in a way that she is looking at him and then he says that she doesn't need the money she's going to forget that and if the cousin her uh, he says that her husband doesn't need the man the money and if the cousin tries to give her that money she's going to behave like she doesn't understand what he's saying and of what he's talking about and so he wakes her up and then our narrator says to her here there you go the amount of money that you asked me for and she's like what money i don't i don't know what you're talking about and so our narrator is very stunned by all that but well he returns home and again the same thing happened when he was away he doesn't felt anything his, his health was well but when he returns home the health goes 
again to the state of fever, the nightmares and the sense that someone is in there with him. One morning he reads in a newspaper a news about a situation that's happening in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil where people are leaving their homes and their houses, fleeing, saying that invisible beings are uh, manipulating them and a kind of vampire is feeding from them and they only drink milk and water and don't um, pick up any other type of food. And so when he reads that is like a proof that he is right, that something is not uh, right in his house. And then he remembers, well, I don't think that is described in the um, short story, but we have to remember that in the beginning of the story, he sees a Brazilian ship going through his property and he waves at the ship. So if we remember the um, myths of vampires, they only enter in your house if you welcome them, right? So in a kind of way, when he waved to the ship, he was welcoming whatever it was, right? So we have that and then in one night he is reading a book and it was a book about that type of thing because he was very interested in that because his mind was already consumed by that whole situation and it was all that he would think about and care about so he was reading uh, re uh, very much about that subject. And he had a book with him in his room and he fell asleep. And when he wakes up, he is like eyeing the book in the periphery and he sees a page turn over. And in the first place, he's like, well, maybe that, that's the wind, right? But no window was open and no breeze of air was passing through the room. And then, shortly, another page turned over and he's like, the thing, the spirit, whatever, whatever it is, he's reading the book. And he's sitting in my chair. So he plans to get up really quick and go there and grab it. And so he tries to do that, but he, he doesn't get there on time. So he doesn't get to get through his hand the thing. Then another night is like right now, he, he, he's like he's, be, he's beginning to hallucinate, right? Because he starts hearing things. And he says one, one day in his diary that he's hearing something. Yes, I'm hearing something. And he tries to mumble what is he's hearing. And he's going to say it was things that are similar, similar to what, is he, what he is hearing. And he, he arrives to a name, Orla. That's the name of our short story, Orla. And he realizes that Orla is the name of someone that is there with him. So now he uh, hit as a name. Another night he is reading, he is writing in his diary. So he is in his table, in his secretary, and he is writing. And he is sensing that Orla is coming coming near him so he uh, continues writing so he um, attracts him that's that was the idea so he allures him near him so he could grab it again and 
he now he senses that it's like he's over him. It's like he almost feels him breathing in his neck. And then he turns over really quickly and he, he is planted in front of the mirror. But he did, what does he see in the mirror? Nothing. He just sees the reflection of the objects that were in the room, but he doesn't see his reflection. And he stays like in shock, he doesn't move, and in a second, he's, he, it, it's like um, something is sliding off the mirror, and he begins to see little by little his image. So something was in front of him. So maybe it was the Orla. So in this moment, madness has already take over him. And he contracts some people to go to his, to his house and exchange the doors and windows with, I think, iron. Iron, yeah, or steel. So he wants iron doors and windows exchange for the wood doors and windows. And that night he's like coming back and forth in his room trying to wait for the Orla. And he, when he senses that he arrives, he is there a little bit more. And then he gets out of his room, but he's like, he's trying to escape the room, leaving a little open of the door. So it's like he's trying to get out, like open the door, the amount that he needs to get out and close the door after him. And when he arrives to the door of the entrance of his house, he does the same. He gets in, sneaks into the door um, just an inch and get out and locks the door. And then he puts fire on the house. So he wants to burn the house. And he's on the outside looking to his house getting burned. And he's happy. He's satisfied with himself but short after he hears a scream a really loud scream a scream of a woman and he sees a window being opened and he then remembered that he forgot his servants so the servants were still in the house and in despair he's going to get help and brings people to help and then he catches himself thinking I killed it I killed Yorla but then he realizes maybe I didn't is this the way to kill the Orla? do does he get killed by burn by fire so he now realizes that perhaps the Orla doesn't die as humans die. And the short story ends when he is thinking about it and he at the end says that if he, he isn't dead, maybe I should be dead. Maybe the only way to get, get over this is to kill myself. So yeah it's um i have to say it's a really fun short story the way that oh and why doesn't he sell the house right why doesn't he doesn't do that and well he has history with that house his ancestors live there and he loves that place so selling it wasn't really a solution and he does he doesn't he didn't want to 
right? That wasn't his objective, so he never thought to sell the house. It's not something that is explicit in the short story, but it's something that you can assume by what you read, um, principally in the beginning of the short story, by the things that he says about the property. And it's a really fun short story. Just because I sat here with spoilers uh, and I told you about the short story, it doesn't take away anything from you reading it so i really advise you to pick this one up it's really quick a quick read is magnificent I, I really enjoyed reading this one it's like at the end he is tormented by the by the presence of the orla right by it and at the same time i think he also feels guilt for have killed his servants. So it's like a two-in-one situation where he conceives suicide. It's I read this in English. I didn't have a um, Portuguese edition with me to read it, so I read it I read it in English and it was really easy. So if you want to get give it a try to read in English and practice your English. I think you have here a really good short story to do that. The English is really simple. It doesn't have many for, uh, foreign, not foreign, like difficult words. So the phrases are really comprehensible and you get the story really well. So I really advise you to read this one in English. And yeah, it's not well, as happened with the black cat of Edgar Allan Poe that I laughed in some parts, it's not like I laughed with this short, short story, the Orla, but at the same time, the things that were happening were curious, you know, you wanted, you were with the narrator trying to figure out what it was, of course, you in the middle of it you have you have suspicions but because you know you know the myth surrounding vampires so well something funny that i didn't know about vampires is that they drank milk and water i thought that they didn't pick up any type of food or liquor like any anything just blood so this was a new thing for me I never saw this so well fun fact right it is a short story about madness about you getting over getting twisted in your own head and not getting over your own narration of what is happening so it's like you in your head and with it, with your demons and not get, not being able to get out of it. It's like a self torture in a way. So it was really interesting in that way. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I think that's it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Remember to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. I don't usually say that, but that is very important. So don't forget that. Ring, press the ring bell button. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, that's it. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!